or tape, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is a Friday evening service of April the 5th, 1996 at the Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Tommy Cook is the speaker for the evening. Praise God. Let's stand together. Hallelujah. Praise God. How many love the Lord tonight? <clears throat> let's, let's give the Lord a good hand clap. Praise God. Love you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. We love you. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, we thank you again tonight for allowing us to come together. Lord God, without you, we're nothing. We can do nothing apart from you. We submit our hearts to you, Lord. We go down. We bow before you this night. Lord, recognizing in ourselves we are nothing. But, Lord, you're everything. And, Lord, we thank you for this word. It is true. It is a lamp to our feet. It's a light to our pathway. Lord, open up this book to us tonight, we pray. Give us revelation, insight, perception, discernment, and uh, illumination from the Holy Ghost. Lord God, we thank you that the teacher will come and teach us tonight. And we'll give you praise, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And we all said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Bless you. Praise God. I'm very glad you're here tonight. Amen. Like I said that. Praise God. Jesus is going to come, isn't he? <clears throat> Jesus is going to come gloriously. He's coming literally and visibly from heaven. I believe he, the same Jesus that went to heaven is coming back. How about you? Yeah. Hallelujah. I believe that Jesus, I've said this many times across the United States, that he's coming in the saints and he's coming with the saints. I believe he's coming in the clouds and he's coming with the clouds. I believe he's coming in fire and he's coming with fire. The scripture said we must look for his coming. We must be like him when he appears or is, is coming and we must love him when he comes. Praise God. And, uh, you know, Paul talks about his coming in Thessalonians. And uh, his coming, the word coming is parousia. That's a Greek word. But Jesus will come again. Amen. And we know the scripture said he's coming in clouds. Matthew 24 says clouds of heaven. Not rain clouds, but the heavenly clouds he's coming in. And the trumpet, the last trumpet's going to sound. Revelation 10, 7, Revelation 11:15. 15. And we thank God there's a seventh trumpet going to blow. Amen. First Corinthians 15 said, uh, Paul said, I'll show you a mystery. We'll not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. Praise God. Well, we are being changed even one, two, three, four, five, and six. But the seventh trump is going to bring the final change. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And another translation says we're changed not only at the last trump, what King James says, but another one says in the last trump. Another one says during the last trump. And so the coming of the Lord is real. The, he's coming in the clouds of heaven. The trumpet's going to sound. The resurrection's going to start. The dead in Christ will start the resurrection. I mean, thank God for those that are in Christ tonight. Amen. Praise God. Not everybody's in Christ. Paul said, as many of you who have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Another scripture said, put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. Make no provision for the flesh. And then his coming is in the day of the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now. Uh, let's go to the book of Revelation, possibly here in just a minute. I said possibly here in a minute. <laughs> How many know that we need uh, apostles, come on, prophets, uh, evangelists, teachers, and, and uh, shepherds in the body of Christ? And uh, I, I was listening, I felt the Lord said today, a teacher, a teacher is one who interprets Scripture with Scripture, and he makes sense. Or I think Bob Mumford said one time, he's a mind engraver. He wants to make dents in our thick heads, <laughs> so it's possible. But how many thank God for the fivefold ministry? Amen. Amen. This is the apostle. This is the prophet. This is the evangelist, this middle finger. The ring finger is the shepherd. Uh, and there's a vein that goes all the way to the heart uh, in that, from this ring finger. And there's the qualification of a shepherd is not here in the head, but it's in the heart. And then there's a teacher that gets into the ear, gets the wax out. How many of you know a teacher will get in your ear? And we need the teaching ministry. Can you say amen? amen. Say it another way. The apostle is the mind of Christ. The prophet is the mouthpiece of God, the spokesman of God. The evangelist is the very heart of God. He's out to win souls and draw others to Jesus. And uh, the shepherd are the eyes. 
that uh, watch over the flock and the teachers of the hands that train. Praise God. Or let me say it another way. Jack uh, taught me this, this, this particular thing. How many know the apostle governs? The prophet guides. The evangelist gathers. The shepherd guards. And the teacher grinds. So we're going to do some grinding tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, in the book of Revelation, let me know that John uh, was told to take the little book and to eat the book. Anybody want to eat the book? We had a saying in Bible college. I didn't go through the book. The book went through me. Hallelujah. And so John was told to eat the book, number one. Number two, he said, when you eat that book, John, it will be sweet as honey in your mouth. How many thank God for revelations that's come to you? Amen. And the joy of the Lord that, that that word, you know, does in you. But then he said it will be bitter also in your belly. I mean, when you start walking it out, it's going to be some bitterness. Now, we're not to get bitter, but there's going to be some trials, tribulations, and situations we're going to go through. And then the Lord said, you must prophesy again. Hallelujah. So as you eat the book, as it becomes sweet to you, as well as working this thing out, there's some bitterness to it. Then you can prophesy. Amen. The true word of the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Now, let's go over to the book of Revelation. <laughs> and uh, we're going to make it over there. Chapter 1. <clears throat> I'm going to take you through, the book of, uh, through some scriptures here. Well, we could, we're going to go through the book of Revelation, the Lord willing. I hope it goes through us tonight. But in chapter 1, remember last night I said the word white. <clears throat> it's used many places in the New Testament. It speaks of God. It speaks of Jesus. It speaks of angels and it speaks of saints. Never does it speak of Satan or demons or the Antichrist. Never. Now, look in Revelation 1, verse 14. I'm just going to take you through a few of these and show you what the Scripture teaches. How many know that we learn by comparing Scripture with Scripture? Isn't that right? Amen. Revelation 1, 14. His head... Now, I could say a lot about these Scriptures, but I won't as, as we go through them. His head... And his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. His eyes were as a flame of fire. All right, then we go over to Revelation 2. Revelation 2 and verse 17. The Scripture says in verse 17, uh, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. To him that, come on, overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna. And I'm going to give him what kind of stone, brethren? A white stone. And in that stone a new name, or a new nature written, which no man knoweth but, but he that receives it. Then we go to chapter 3 of Revelation, and verse 4 and 5. Revelation chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. He said, Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis. You know, this was the church that said they were living, and Jesus said, I tell you, you're dead. I mean, no, that's, that's deception. And how many know that's a passive state? When you're dead, how many know you're in a passive state? Come on, you're in la-la land. Isn't that right? Amen. But verse 4, Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments or soiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment. I'm not going to blot his name out of the book of life. Hallelujah. Can somebody say amen? amen. Then look in Revelation 4.4. 4. Praise God. It says here, around the throne... There were 24 elders, and they were sitting and clothed in white raiment. Then we go up to, we go up to, um, uh, go back to Revelation 3, 318, I believe it is, 318. Jesus said, I counsel thee, the last church age, Laodicea, which I believe we are living in. The Lord, uh, Laodicea means the people rule. I counsel thee to buy thee gold, try it in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed. Praise God. Then Revelation chapter 6. Look at this verse. Verse 11. Here are, are the, the martyred saints. And how many know there's going to be people die at the end of this age, whether you believe it or not? There's going to be some martyrs that's going to die in America and other countries. Amen? Revelation 6, 11. Praise God. I know these, many of these teachers say we're going to be gone. We're going to fly out of here. But I just don't sit in the Word. How about you? 6, 11. I, I was in that teaching many years ago. And about 70 or so, uh, God opened my eyes to it. First, I got mad <laughs> when I heard there was no rapture. And then I got glad because it began to show me the truth. Revelation chapter 6. Jesus is coming, though. Amen? 6-11. Amen. 
It says, And white robes were given to every one of them. It was said to them that they should uh, rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be uh, fulfilled. Uh, then in 7, chapter 7 and verse 9, 7, 9, he, John sees this great multitude here in Revelation. And after this, I, after this uh, sealing, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute, after this I beheld in Lord a great multitude. Uh, which no man could number of all nations, kindreds, people, and tongues. Notice, they stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms uh, in their hands. Praise God. Where are they at? They're before the throne, aren't they? Praise God. Standing before the throne. Amen. Standing before it. <clears throat> and then the Scripture says, there are those round about the throne. And the Scripture says, there are those that are in the throne. Praise God. So here in chapter 7, now look at verse 13 as well. And one of the elders answered and saying to me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? Uh, who are these guys? Where did they come from? Well, he tells you right here. You know the Bible has all the answers. Amen. Throw your, a lot of your books away and get in the book. Hallelujah. <laughs> come on, if it doesn't line up with the book. Isn't that right? That's what I had to do. And I said, Sir, thou knowest. Uh, he said here, now notice. He said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, have washed their robes, made them white, in the blood of the Lamb. Praise God. How many thank God for His blood? Amen. Hallelujah. I want to tell you something about that garment just a minute. <clears throat> How many know that when you got saved, it was a free gift. It was by His blood. You didn't pay for it, did you? Amen. And so, it, righteousness was imputed to you and to me. It was a gift. But how many know there's a difference in the gift, we would say, of salvation and the robe of righteousness? The first one is a gift. The other one has to be attained. And that's overcoming. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, God gives, you the, God gives you the gift and God gives you the robe. But I'm going to tell you, we have to put the robe on. Can you hear what I'm saying? We have to put it on. He gives it, but we put it on. The bride hath made herself ready. Now, you go over to Genesis just a minute, 24. Let's turn it just a second. I'm coming back to Revelation. Now, in Genesis 24, how many know that Abraham sent Eliezer, the servant, to find Isaac a bride. Now, Abraham is a picture of the Father. Eli is a picture of the Holy Spirit. Isaac is a picture uh, of the bridegroom. Rebecca is a picture of the bride, right? And her family is a picture of the rest of the church. Now, the first thing that she did, that Re Rebecca did here in Genesis 24, <coughs> was to water the camels and give drink to the servant. Now, that servant is a picture of the Holy Spirit. First thing she did was minister, we would say spiritually, to the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you hear that? And there's two things I see here. I mean, old camels drink a lot of water. Forty gallons, possibly. Ten camels, that's 400 gallons. Well, how many know that is two things, faith and works. And <laughs> now, now look at this. Look way over here in Genesis 24. Go over to verse 53. I'm just showing you one little verse here. There's so much in this chapter. Verse 53. The servant. Now, he's a picture of the Holy Spirit now. The servant, after here, brought forth jewels of silver, jewels of gold, and what else? Come on. Raiment. And gave them to Rebekah. He gave also to her brother, to her mother, and precious things. Now, I want you to notice. He gave that to her, but he never put it on her. Can you hear that? He gave it to her, but he didn't put it on her. God provides all of it, but you've got to put something on. That robe. Those garments. Come on, somebody say amen. And I could show you how to get into that, but I'm not going to touch that. Now, let's go back to Revelation. Revelation. I'll teach a lot on those garments. 14, 14. Hallelujah. Revelation 14, 14. Praise God. It says here, And I looked, and behold, a white cloud... And upon the cloud one set like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, in his hand a sharp sickle. What kind of cloud is it? Come on. White cloud. All right. Then we go to Revelation 15, 6. Revelation 15, 6. And here it said, The seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues clothed in pure and white linen. I want you to notice that. And then we go to Revelation 19, verse 8. <clears throat> and to her, this is the bride now. I want to tell you, not everybody's going to be in the bride either. Now, God, Jesus knows who they'll be. 
But how many know when you got saved, you're not the bride when you first get saved? Come on. No way. The Lord has to draw us to him. There's got to be an intimacy, a fellowship, you know, from us to him and so forth. A lot of things we could say about that bride, a groom and a bride and bridegroom relationship. But here he says in this verse, verse eight, notice to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white for the fine linen is something. What is it? Come on. It means righteous deeds of the saints. Righteous deeds of the saints. How many know there's some righteous deeds we do after we're saved? That's part of putting that robe on. Okay, now let's go over to Revelation 19, 14. Hallelujah. And notice what it says. And the armies which were um, in heaven followed him. Come on, up on white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. And, and then also verse 11. Here's the white horse rider. Come on, his name is Jesus. Amen. And then in chapter 20, one other verse here. Chapter 20, uh, verse 11. I mean, he's getting these scriptures down. Praise God. We'll get the tape then. <laughs> chapter 20, verse 11. I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. How many thank God for the word of God tonight? Amen. Now, let's go back to Revelation 6. I left one out. I did it purposely. But before we <clears throat> go there and read the scripture... How many know white speaks of light? Huh? White speaks of light. It means dazzling white. It means bright. It means brilliant. It means radiant, clear. It means purity, holiness, innocence, uh, untainted. And it means dead white. Hallelujah. How many know the scripture says that his raiment was white as the light? You ever read that New Testament? It says his raiment was white as snow. It said that it was shining exceedingly white as snow. Another scripture said no fuller on earth can white them. That's Jesus' garments. Hallelujah. And then his garments were white, another scripture says. Now, Revelation 6. I was always taught for a long time that the white horse rider was Antichrist. But I tell you, by revelation, it's not Antichrist. I was, how many was taught that? Just raise your hands. Don't be ashamed. Not too many. How many was never taught anything about it? <laughs> well, praise God, you're better off. <laughs> right speaking. <laughs> but in Revelation 6, let's read verse 2. How many's got your Bible? Let's read it. Come on, read it with me. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow. And a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now, there's four important things I want to just show you in that verse right here. Number one, it says that <clears throat> he had a bow. Amen? He has, well, well, well I should, I, let me back up. It's a white horse rider, first of all. The white horse rider. Now, in all those scriptures I gave you, let me ask you a question. Did you see anything about antichrist, demons, or devils? No way. No way. How many know the Scripture is true? Amen. And this cannot be the Antichrist. This cannot be uh, some demonic force or Satan or something like that. I believe when you take all the Scriptures I've given you, I believe they all, this word white works together with all the others. Amen. So first of all, it's a white horse rider. That's number one. Now, how many know Jesus said one time, Satan, get behind me? Remember that Scripture? You know what that means? It means literally follow behind me. Follow behind me. But Jesus was saying, I'll go first, and I will permit you to follow behind me. I mean, on the book of Revelation, when God opens seals, and there's trumpets and things happening, he also permits the enemy to move too, doesn't he? I mean, you know, when the fire fell in Leviticus chapter 9, the people fell on their faces, the true fire of God. But in chapter 10, how I many you know, somebody worked up some false fire. The false always follows the true. Isn't that right? In Acts chapter 4, when they took the big offering up, they laid it at the apostles' feet, and they took those offerings and, and spread it throughout the camp and, and ministered to all the people. What happened in chapter 5? Ananias and Sapphira, they lied about the money, didn't they? And fell dead. How many see what I'm saying? And this white horse rider goes forth, and after he goes forth, come on, war follows that. And then famine, death, and hell, and so forth. But this white horse rider is not Antichrist. Let's read it again. I saw, and behold, a white horse. 
He that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given to him. He went forth conquering and to conquer. So number one, he's a white horse rider. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 19. Let's, let's interpret Scripture with Scripture. I mean, oh, you'll never go wrong when you do that. You try to figure it out in your mind, you'll go wrong. You know, right? Revelation 19. I've tried it before. It won't work. <laughs> Revelation 19, verse 11. I saw heaven open. Open heaven. Paul had an open heaven. Jesus had an open heaven. Isaiah had an open heaven. I mean, oh, the overcomers is going to have an open heaven. And behold, come on, a white horse. And he that sat on him was called something. Faithful and true and in righteousness he doth judge. And come on, he makes war. Now let's see what his name is. Look down to verse 13. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called something. The Word of God. Now back in Revelation 6, this white horse rider, here is the Word of of God going forth, or Christ going forth, or the anointed Word going forth. How do you want to say it? It's the Word of God. How many know that it, is, it conquers every foe? Come on, amen? Praise God. So number one, it's a white horse rider, which speaks of purity, righteousness, and holiness, and so forth. Two, the second thing I want to point out is in chapter 6, verse 2, this white horse rider had something. What did he have in verse 2? Come on. He had a bow. He had a bow. In Habakkuk chapter 3, uh, verse 9, here's what it says. Thy bow was made naked according to the oaths of the tribes, even thy word. So the, so the bow speaks of the word. And we saw that white horse rider in Revelation 16, come on, was called the word of God. Can you say amen? And then number 3. Notice something else in verse 2. Something else was, was given to him. It said, a crown was given unto him. Praise God. A crown. Well, somebody said, that's only one crown. Well, look in Revelation 14. Look in Revelation 14 again. Hallelujah. And look at verse 14. I looked, and behold, a white cloud. And upon the cloud one set, set like the Son of Man, having on his head a what? A golden crown, one golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. But if when you read Revelation 19, come on, he's got many crowns. You know why? Because you go back to chapter 1, there was a people saying, Hey, Lord, you're worthy to receive these crowns, and they throw them at his feet. Amen? How many want to throw your crown at his feet? Praise God. Now, how many know there's different crowns in the Scripture? There's a crown of life given to those that are tested. There's the crown of righteousness. There was the incorruptible crown Paul spoke about. And there was the crown of rejoicing and probably some others. But I wrote those four down. There's various crowns that are given. And here, I believe in chapter 6, this is the Lord. But how many know, know that it's the Lord in a people? Huh? How many know we need some answers right now? I'm going to tell you, when this white horse rider, these overcomers go forth, God's going to have some answers in them. Amen? Praise God. They're going to speak, come on, the word of the Lord. Amen. Now, I want to go with this again. He's a white horse rider, right? He has a bow, picture of the word of God, and he's given a crown. He's given a crown. I could take you into that a little more. Now, now the fourth thing is, look here. He went forth conquering and to conquer. There's only one power that can conquer, and that's the word of God. How many thank God for his word tonight? And the word conquer means to prevail. Or get the victory over. It's the word for overcomer. And so this overcomer is going forth with a bow and is given a crown. Praise be unto his name. Hallelujah. Now, that white horse rider, I want to I give you something here uh, that I wrote down. His mount was a white horse. Revelation 19. Now, think about this just a minute. I want to tell you 12 things. His mount was a white horse. Number two, his titles was faithful and true, and he was called the Almighty God, and he's called the Word of God. Number three, his warfare is this, that in righteousness he doth judge and he makes war. And the Bible said there in 19, he smites the nations and he defeats the armies of Antichrist. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. His eyes was like a flame of fire. His head, there were many crowns. His name, again, is called the Word of God. Hallelujah. His clothing was a vesture 
dipped in blood. And his followers were the armies coming from heaven. Somebody say amen. amen. And his mouth, uh, there was a sharp sword uh, where the remnant was slain with the sword of his mouth. And his rule is the nations. He's going to rule them with a rod of iron. Hallelujah. And his feet, the Bible said, he treadeth the winepress uh, of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God in Revelation 19. And his, majest, uh, his majesty, na his ma uh, name, this glorious majesty, is King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. How many get excited about Jesus? We better be, hadn't we? Better be. Go to Revelation 7 now. Let's look at this overcomer. Thank God for Jesus. Now, I want to tell you seven things, and I will look in the Scriptures here with you. Number one, what is the seal? Just write these seven things down if you want to. What is the seal? Number one. Number one, what is the seal? Number two, number two, who is bringing the seal? Number three, which way is it coming? Number four, what is this ministry that, that's bringing the seal saying to us? <clears throat> And number five, we see the fifth angel that's going to do the sealing. And number six, who is sealed? And number seven, how many are sealed? Praise God. Let's look at Revelation 7, verse 1. How many know you're, when you got saved, the sealing started in you? I said, when you got saved, the sealing started. Amen. When you got filled with the Holy Ghost, the Bible said we're sealed to the day of redemption. When you got filled with the Holy Spirit, which is the earnest of the down payment, isn't it? Or the inheritance. How many know we ain't got... Everything yet that God's got for us. And I say we ain't, because we ain't. I mean, on the outer court, you were forgiven. In the holy place, you are filled. But in the holy of holies, when we attain to that place and get to that realm, I mean, oh, that's the fullness. Anybody want to enter the fullness? You may have the baptism of the Holy Ghost tonight, and I may have it, but you don't have the fullness yet. Neither do I. We know in part, prophesy in part, come on. But that which is in part shall be what? Done away with. Huh? I mean, oh, we're looking for the perfect coming yet. Amen. The lesser is going to be swallowed up by the greater. But here in chapter 7, notice something. He said, after these things, I saw how many angels? Come on. Four angels. Four is the number of the world. Creation. Uh, standing on the four corners of the earth. Well, there may be natural uh, four corners. Uh, you know, some of the astronauts have said there are. But I see more than that. How many know that in your soul, there's your mind, your will, emotions, and your desires? And how many know God's holding back judgment before... Uh, uh, so he can seal the people of God. What happened in the ark? How many know that the ark had to be sealed right before the judgment? Isn't that right? It had to be sealed with pitch or, or whatever it is, tar or whatever it is, right before the judgment of God. We see in Ezekiel 9, right before the uh, judgment of God, God's sealing of people. We see it right here. God is going to seal his people. How many know God will not forsake us? Come on, amen? He'll never forsake us. After these things, I saw these four angels standing in the four corners of the earth. So there is, say, say there is four natural corners. That's all right. But I'm telling you, there's corners to our soul. Hallelujah. And man has the capability to destroy today, and God must hold it back. Isn't that right? Until he seals a people. And he's holding the four winds. What? That the wind shall not blow on the earth or the sea or any tree. Um, and so I could go into that naturally and spiritually. I can see it in various ways. And I saw another angel. Now notice, he saw another angel. You, oh, he saw four. Now he sees another. That's five, isn't it? What's the number five? Grace and what else? Come on. The ministry. Fivefold ministry. Do you know that there's a ministry in Revelation working? And I'm going to show it to you. Look in, I'm going to take you through the scripture in Revelation again. Revelation 1. I, you can't leave your mind on the parking lot with this kind of teaching. Come on. I didn't get this in Sunday school, brother. Come on, I've got it by studying, seeking God, and crying out to God. Amen? Amen. By the grace of God, it came. How many of those speed things you got? It wasn't easy, was it, speed? Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Revelation 1 1. The revelation of who? Come on. Jesus. You know what my, my Bible says up at the top? The revelation of St. John the Divine. He's not divine. Come on. A lot of these headings aren't worth having, are they? The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him. Why did he give it to him? To show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified by his angel to his servant John. Now, look at this. This vision came from the Father to the Son. From the Son to the angel. From the angel uh, to John. And John to the churches or the servants of God. Can you see that? Now, look in Revelation 2.1. How I many know oh, the East Church, he talks about an angel here 
Look in chapter 2, verse 1. Unto the angel. What's an angel? A messenger, isn't it? To the messenger of the church at Ephesus. You know what Ephesus means? It means desirable. Well, how many know there's some things that aren't too desirable? <laughs> but to the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holds the seven stars, and he's walking in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Now, this is not an angel, a created being that we know of. Why? Because look at verse 4. Nevertheless, I have sworn against thee because you've left your first love. He's talking to the ministry here in the church at Ephesus. Are you hearing me? He's talking to a ministry. Praise God. Some say shepherds, some say apostles, some say this. Don't matter. But whoever it is, he's talking to that ministry. He's saying you're responsible. Amen? And to each one of those churches he talked. Now, go up to chapter 15 of Revelation. Praise God. Am you still with me? All right. Praise God. Now, look at chapter 15 of Revelation. <clears throat> I saw another sign. Well, if he saw another sign, he'd seen one before. Where is it at? In heaven. Great and marvelous. Seven uh, angels having the seven uh, last plagues. For in them is filled up the wrath of God. They are filled with the wrath of God. How many know the wrath of God is going to hit this earth? How many believe that? Mm -hmm. How many know God didn't send his wrath till he has to? But he'll do it, won't he? Now, you'll notice what it says here. He said there are seven plagues, right? All right, good. Now, notice something uh, here in this chapter, I believe it is. He said there were seven, uh, seven, um, seven angels with seven last plagues. Now, seven's what? Could it be spiritual perfection? All right, we'll say it is. Seven angels, seven plagues, or seven vile judgments, or bold judgments. All right? Now, in chapter 16, how many know he lets loose these seven judgments upon the earth? Isn't that right? And you can go back to Exodus and come on up to Revelation and see there's a comparison. I want to tell you something. How many know God judged those soothsayers in the Old Testament? Huh? He certainly did. How many know when the boils broke out, they got broke out with boils? And then there was one plague they couldn't bring, and they said, this is the finger of God. I heard a man say not long ago, and it's his revelation, not mine, but he said God told them this is a year God's going to judge the psychics. How many know some of them need to be judged? I pray some of them get saved, amen, and repent. Come on, get delivered from those wicked spirits. All right, so we see something here. We've got seven angels, seven plagues, and they're being poured out in chapter 16. Now look in chapter 17, verse 1. I want to show you something here. 17, 1. And there came one of the seven angels. John just saw those seven angels, 15th chapter, didn't he? One's coming now, which had the seven vials. So one out of the seven comes to John, and he said, he talked with me. Saying to me, come hither, or come closer, and I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore, harlot, come on, that sitteth where she's sitting. I mean, no, that's humanity. Look in verse 15, it tells you right here what it is, verse 15. And he said to me, the waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. And how many know that religious system is over people today worldwide? So this angel was showing John. Now, in the, time of, in the time of these judgments coming up on the earth, how many know God's going to judge a harlot? Come on now, don't shout me down. And how many know we better come out of her if we're in it? You're in that harlot system, you better get out of it now. Don't stay in that system. Can you say amen? amen. Then we go over to Revelation 21 now. Hallelujah. All right, look at verse. Look up to verse... Uh, Nine. Now, it's almost like what he said in 17. And there came one, uh, one of the seven angels. How many? One of the seven. Which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues. And he talked with me, saying, come hither, or come closer. Now, he said, I'm going to show you the bride, the lamb's wife. First, he showed him the harlot. Now, I'm showing you the bride. So in the time of the judgments coming up on the earth, God has a holy bride coming forth. There's a heart being judged, and there's a bride coming forth. Hallelujah for the bridegroom. Who can hear that tonight? Now, 
Look here in chapter 21. We're, we're going to follow this scripture down. Now look down to verse 15. The same angel, one of the sevens, talking to John. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city. Amen? Verse 17. And he, that's this angel, measured the wall thereof. Now I could say a lot about the city and that wall. And then if you come down with me to chapter 22, verse 1. It said, and he showed me, this angel now, showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Then look in verse 6. The same angel. He said to me, these sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show to his servants the things which must shortly uh, be done. Now, look at verse 8. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of who? Come on. That angel. He said, I fell down at that angel's feet, which showed me these things. Then he said, the angel said to him, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and them which keep the saying of this book, worship God. John thought he was Jesus. And yet he said, Get up, John. Get up. I'm a prophet. Hallelujah. I'm of the brethren. So that angel was not one that flaps his wings. Come on. <laughs> that angel was a redeemed man who died, I suppose, and went into the heavenlies. And he brought the revelation to John. Look in 2216. Hallelujah. I, Jesus, have sent, come on, my prophet, actually, my angel. To testify unto you these things in the churches. What things? The revelation of Jesus. I am the root and the offspring of David. I mean, oh, that's his first coming. <laughs> and then he said, I'm the bright, come on, and morning star. That's his second coming. Hallelujah. I mean, oh, he's coming in us. And yet he's coming out there. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Back to Revelation 7. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. So a lot of those angels in the book of Revelation are ministries. Now, there's God's created angels. I don't, no doubt they're working. John, uh, Jack saw one last night. But in chapter 7 now, he said, I saw these four angels standing on those four corners, holding this wind back <clears throat> that it couldn't blow on the earth, sea, and tree. Verse 2, I saw another angel. And this is the fifth angel. Fifth angel. This is the ministry angel <clears throat> ascending from the east. Notice, he's coming from the east. That's where the sun comes up, isn't it? Coming from the east. And notice what he's doing. Having what? What's he got? Come on. The seal, the seal of who? The living God. That's life. Praise God. Bringing the seal of life. Amen? And we know we need life tonight. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, or the tree, nor or the sea, till we, the little word we, till we have sealed the servants, come on, of our God where? In their foreheads. And I heard the number of them. That were sealed, and there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. And how many know that last part is what throws most people? The tribes of Israel. Turn to James chapter 1. <laughs> James chapter 1. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many know His Word is true? <clears throat> James chapter 1. And verse 1. James, a servant. Yeah, love slaves. That's who's being sealed in Revelation 7. Do you know that? He said servants. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes, which are what? Scattered abroad. Greeting. Now look at the next two words. My brethren. Hallelujah. Praise God. Those that are scattered are brethren. Can it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations? Praise God. Now go to Revelation 14. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's see who these people are. I don't believe there's two different 144,000 like some teach. I teach as one. <clears throat> I don't believe it's two. I believe it's one. I, I'm not dogmatic, but I, I, I believe it's just one group. But I want to show in chapter 14 uh, just two things here. Look in verse 3, the latter part of verse 3. It says this 144,000. By the way, these aren't Jehovah's Witnesses. Huh? <laughs> Do what, Glenn? Yeah, sure. I know. Yeah, that's right. 
And for, notice in chapter three, uh, 14, verse 3, the latter part, it says, And no man can learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from where, though? The earth. It didn't just say natural Israel, did it? It didn't say the Middle East. Come on. It said the earth. That, all right. What's the next part? All right. Let's see something else here. There's another verse here somewhere, if I can find it. <laughs> it says they were redeemed from among men. Isn't that right? Uh, in verse, uh, look at verse 4, latter part, uh, middle part. These were redeemed from among men, being something, the first fruits to God and to the Lamb. So these are the first fruits. This is the Zion company. This is the Lamb company. And they are redeemed from the earth. They're redeemed from among men. Now, 12 times 12 is 144, right? But if you multiply times 10 by 10 by 10, you've got 144,000. The reason I did that is because uh, 10 by 10 by 10 was the Holy of Holies dimension in the Old Testament tabernacle. And these are Holy of Holies people, brother. These are the overcomers, the sons of God. This is God's army that he's raising up. And as somebody said this morning or sometime, not everybody, I think it's Glenn, not everybody's going to be in the army of God. Are you hearing me? No, sir. Not everybody's going to be in that, that army. Not everybody's going to reign. God knows who they are. Praise God. And so uh, I could, I, well, there's a lot more I could show, but I'm not going to go into that, Lord. Help me. <laughs> Praise God. Back to chapter 7 of Revelation. Revelation 7. Now, notice something here. He said in verse 4, uh, verse 3, Don't hurt the earth, don't hurt the sea, don't hurt the trees, till we have sealed the servants. Notice, the servants, the servants. How many want to be a servant? The servants of our God in their uh, foreheads. Praise God. So, so we're being sealed by God. Now, I want to show you what I think that seal is. Turn to Jeremiah 31. <clears throat> Let's go to Jeremiah. Chapter 31, please. And look at this seal here. How many know today we are the Israel of God? Amen. You know, in the natural, there was, there was Israel in Israel, Jerusalem in Jerusalem, Zion. But we're the Israel of God. God has a Jerusalem people and a Zion people, doesn't he? As well. And so here in chapter 31 of Jeremiah, and look down to verse 31. Behold, the days come. Uh, saith the Lord, that I will make a, what kind of covenant? New covenant. A new covenant. So let me ask you something. Are you connected with this new covenant because of Jesus? Yes. If you know him, huh? Yes. Sure you are. I mean, believe that. A new covenant and with, but he noticed, he said, with the house of Israel. Well, aren't we Israel today too? Come on. Amen. And with the house of Judah... Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband to them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law somewhere. That inward part there, notice that, is the soul. Do you know that? I'm going to show it to you if you don't. And I will put my law in the inward parts and write it where? In their hearts. And will be to them a God, they shall be to me a people. A relationship. Now, go to Hebrews 8. What's he going to put in our inward parts, though? His what? His law. And where's that law first going to be at? In your inward parts. Now, before you go to Hebrews, turn to Psalms 19. I've got to go there first. How many believe he's restoring our minds? I've been teaching, I mean, I've been studying on fragmented souls again. And I'm going to teach on for long, but... How many know that our souls are, have been fragmented, brethren? They have been fragmented. Whatever you put your mind into, how many know your mind goes into that very thing? Whether it's idolatry, idolatry perversion, whatever. Whatever it goes into. Or if it goes to the Lord, that's a good, good quality. But here in Psalms 19, look at this verse 7. He said something here. David did. The law of the Lord is perfect. The law of the Lord. The law of the Lord. Converting. That word converting means restoring. The soul. What's going to restore your soul? The Word of God. The Word of God is saving our souls, isn't it? The law of the Lord is perfect, converting, restoring the soul, and so forth. And, and I could give you other scriptures with that. So let's go back to Jeremiah. He said, after those days, I'm going to put my law in your inward parts. That's your soul. And I'm going to write it in your heart. And you're going to be a, a people to God. Now, go to Hebrews chapter 8. And we see it here. Look at verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their... Now, notice here he didn't say inward parts. He said mine. 
And I write them in their hearts, I'll, I'll be to them a God, they shall be to me a people. Then in chapter 10, look in chapter 10 of, of Hebrews. Praise God. There's a verse here in chapter 10. In verse, oh, what verse is that? Verse 16, isn't it? This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. Now notice here, he said in the minds, I'm going to write them in the mind. Go to Revelation chapter 3. Oh, thank you for your word, Lord. Revelation, uh, Revelation 3, 12. Here it is. Him that... Now, let me ask you. Is everybody overcoming? Do we ha have the opportunity to overcome? Yes. Sure we do. Amen. Is there a possibility we can't overcome? Yes. Through the Lord? Yes. But he said, Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. Jack got on that last night. I will write upon him. Notice, I'm going to write on him, this pillar, this overcomer. What's he going to write on us? Come on. The name, the nature of my God. And notice, the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down, not goeth up. Amen. Uh, notice, coming down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him something. Look at this. What's he going to write on us now? All right, turn back to Revelation 19. Hallelujah. Revelation 19. I'm going to write up on him my new name. Who? The overcomer. All right. Revelation 19. Now, look, look in verse. Look in verse 12. His eyes, again, a flame of fire. On his head, many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was called with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called what? Come on. The Word of God. What's he, what's he writing in our minds and hearts? The Word of God. Amen. We're being sealed by that Word. Can you say amen? amen. Then look in Revelation 22. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 22, verse 4. And they shall see His face. Moses knew Him face to face, didn't he? There's an intimacy here. And His name, His nature, shall be where? In their foreheads. Oh, hallelujah. In their minds, he's putting that seal. Can you say amen? Amen. Now, let's go back to Revelation 14, <clears throat> verse 1, just verse 1. And he says here, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him, now notice the little scripture there, with him, a hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written where? Come on. In their foreheads. This one forty-four thousand. It's I teach it as a symbolical number. I don't believe it's literal, and, and and I believe it's symbolical. And and how many is going to be in this uh, this great people? God only knows. And here's what I believe the Lord has given me by revelation. And I say this humbly: the one forty-four thousand, the man child, and the two witnesses are the same in the book of Revelation. I was taught it was two men. I don't know how you were taught it, but it's not two men. Hallelujah. God's overcomers are arising in this end time. Can you say amen? amen. Praise God. I mean, thank God there's a, there is a remnant from every nation called the army of God he's putting together. Amen? Now, one other scripture. Go to Ezekiel 9. Sister was all around it today. <laughs> but before you go to 9, look in chapter 8, verse 1. And there's an there, there's a, a important scripture here in 8.1. Ezekiel chapter 8 and verse 1. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. 8 1. And it came to pass in the sixth year. Now, what's the scripture? Six year, six month, fifth day. Six, six, five. Six is the number of man. And here's a double six here. <laughs> and five is the number of, again, grace and the ministry. Now, you go into chapter 8, read these abominations that Sister talked about today. And then he takes you right into 9, chapter 9, where there's a ceiling. So it's 6 month, 6 um, year, but yet 5th day. One day before it would be 6, 6, 6, God seals the people. Hallelujah. How many won't get sealed tonight? Praise God. And look in chapter 9, verse 1. Now, in chapter 9, 
We've got to do something. How many know we're living in 1996? We've got to upgrade the weapons for today. Isn't that right? All right, let's read it. He cried also in mine ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charged over the city to draw near every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. Notice destruction. We saw that in chapter 7, didn't we? We knew destruction hid in Noah's day, and yet God protected his people. How many believes God's going to protect us? Do you believe that? Verse 2. Behold, how many men came? What's that number of? Man, of man, isn't it? All right. How many know man brings destruction? Man is destructive, isn't he, in himself? And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lies towards the north, and every man had something. Notice a slaughter weapon in his hand. Well, how many know today we've got atomic warfare, nuclear warfare, we have uh, bio uh, biological warfare, germ warfare. You've got to upgrade everything today. It's not just a little sword out here, come on, trying to kill somebody. We've got enemies all around this world today that would like to destroy us. Isn't that right? <laughs> come on, amen. And yet he said, notice, he said right here that these six had a slaughter weapon in, in their hand. And what else? And one man was among them. And what's he clothed with? I guarantee it's white. <laughs> he's, he's got righteousness in him and upon him. And notice a rider's inkhorn by his side, and they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. So something's going to be judged. Now, I see two things right here, brethren. I see deliverance or death. Deliverance or death. How many know that we can be delivered? Come on. We can be sealed. And I believe that part of the end-time ministry is deliverance. Hallelujah. If you want to go on to be saved in your soul and grow up in Christ, it's going to take some deliverance, isn't it? And as you get the junk out, how many know Christ comes in? Hallelujah. That's the, and that's for me, too. And so something's judged. And then look, notice in verse 13, God's glory lifted. The glory of God's lifting here in verse 13. It said it went up, the cherub left here, went up uh, from Israel. Uh, it says here, then he calls, notice, he calls uh, for this man clothed with linen that had this rider's inkhorn by his side. Verse 4, and the Lord said to him, go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, the church tonight. And what are you going to do, brethren? What are you going to do going through Jerusalem? He's going to set a mark, isn't he? Up on, come on, the foreheads, the foreheads. That's what we saw in Revelation. Of the men that sigh and cry, that's the intercessors, for all the abominations that be done in the midst of, midst of what? Midst of the church. I mean, know oh, it's out there in the land. But there's some abominations in the church we need to cry out against. Isn't that right? And then notice, after the seating, to the others he said in mind, hearing, go you after him. You can't go until somebody gets sealed. Go through the city, smite, let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Come on, somebody say amen. Slay utterly old and young, and come not near any... Verse 6, come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin where... House of God, sanctuary. Turn to Revelation 9. This could be World War III in Revelation 9. <clears throat> How many know that we need to hate war? People get killed, don't they? Destroyed. But war comes, though, because of wicked man. Isn't that right? Because of the enemy. Look here in chapter 4. We, the bottomless pits open. Things come out. But verse 4. It was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, nor any green thing, <coughs> neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Anybody want to get sealed again tonight? Come on. There's protection with that seal. How many of those devils are going to know we're going to be sealed? Amen. They'll know it, won't they? Praise God. So God's going to seal his people. He see One other scripture I want to give you is 2 Timothy 2.19. And I just want to bring it to a halt there. 2 Timothy 2.19. I don't know how long I've been going. 2 Timothy 2.19. Hallelujah. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are His. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from something. You know what I see in that uh, seal? I see, number one, ownership. I see ownership. <clears throat> the Lord knoweth those that are His. And two, those that are His, let him depart from iniquity. That's holiness. So with the seal of God is ownership and holiness. Amen? Amen? Praise God. So God is sealing a people. God has a white horse company. Hallelujah. Going forth as the Word of God and going to have some answers. Amen. We, we believe a revival is going to break out. But I'm going to tell you something. The greatest revival, the biggest revival, is not going to come until the sons of God are raised up. 
I mean, we're going to have revival up to that time, possibly. But the greatest outpouring will come when the overcomers are raised up. God's army. He's going to, I said this last night. He's going to literally pick them up and sling them around the world. Translate them around the world. Hallelujah. And revival will break out. Praise God. Amen. I'm waiting for the fullness. How about you? Praise God. We've got to get a lot of junk out of us before we can. You see, brethren, if you let God come into you tonight and deliver you, set you free in all those areas that you and I need. Get your mind, well, emotions and desires saved. And how many know that what is in your spirit moves up into those areas and pushes those things out? Come on. And then when this fullness comes, he can come right into you with no problem. But if we've blocked him out, locked him out, I mean, no, he doesn't have that. He doesn't get to come in there. I mean, you lock him out. You can take Jesus as much as you want, or you can lock him out. That's what happened in Matthew 25. Those foolish virgins, they thought they could make it through midnight or tribulation, but they didn't have enough oil. And how many know the word foolish means a blockhead or stupid? And how many know we're blockheads if we think we can make it through midnight? Come on. With just a little bit of oil, we need all we can get. Because the, right, the, the, the wise had oil in their lamps. That's your spirit. And in their vessel, that's the soul. Christ had overshadowed their soul for midnight. He must overshadow ours. Can you say amen? amen? Let's stand. Praise you, Jesus. Let's praise the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, God. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. Sila brakayam de la brosso kura brasi andabrakatai. Praise you, Lord God. Lord, we love you. We praise you, Lord. Seal us, O God. Seal us for this end time, Lord. We need your seal, the seal of life, Lord, the, the word of God. In the name of Jesus, seal us, O Father. Help us tonight, Lord. Kiraston de la brasi brasi karabrasi andabrakaya. Rosoki de brahanda brakaya. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Let's praise the Lord. Praise God. My son, the Lord is with thee this night. The Lord shall establish thy going out and thy coming in. The Lord has overshadowed thee. Yea, put many things in your heart and in your mind for this hour. And yea, know that God shall thrust thee forth. And the Lord shall give you extra energy and strength to do my will and my bidding for this hour, my son. And know that I put my, uh, my armor upon thee. My belt of truth is upon thee. So go forth in my name, speaking that truth that I've given thee. No man shall harm or stay or stop thee. For that which I've spoken, it shall be. That which I've said, yea, it shall be performed. And yea, my angels do watch over thee. And I do protect thee, my son, as you go out and as you come in. Yea, through the sunlight and through the darkness. Yea, God is with thee. Walk thou humbly before the Lord. And yea, revelation shall come in the midst of, uh, of thee and in the night season. And I shall speak uh, in, into your innermost being. And I shall show you things to come. For your heart is cried out. And yea, I have heard the cry. The cry has come up before me. And I, the Lord, shall truly answer thee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give him praise tonight. Hallelujah. Praise to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise to Jesus. Praise the Lord. The hand of the Lord is outstretched to thee, my son. And know that God has heard your cry. And know that the Lord is with thee. Fear not and fret not what man would say or what man would do. I am your strength, your high tower. I am your shield and buckler. Yea, the Lord is with thee. I've given you a hearing ear, saith the Lord. So hear thou the voice of the Lord thy God. For thou shalt hear a voice behind thee saying, now, this is the way uh, when you walk uh, to the left and when you walk to the right. And yea, the Lord is with thee. Hear the teachers and thou shalt be helped. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise him tonight. Let's praise our Jesus tonight. Praise the Lord God. Praise the Lord God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Can I minister to you, my brother? Praise God. Hallelujah. The Lord has brought thee uh, to this place tonight. The Lord is with thee. And the Lord shall open your eyes to see new truths. Uh, the Lord shall reveal himself to you uh, in the night season. Fre fear not and fret not. Know that I uh, am with thee. I am your front guard and I am thy rear guard. And the Lord God shall uh, bless thee. So taste and see that the Lord is good, and the Lord shall bless thee as, uh, from Zion. The Lord shall bless thee, my son, and he shall take you to the mountain as you humble yourself before him. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise him. Amen. Praise God. Praise you, Jesus. We love you, Lord, tonight. We love you. I got a word on this other side. I got to come around this way. Come on, let's praise him. Amen.
Let's praise our God. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord, affirm the Lord shall strengthen you. The Lord shall quicken thee. And the Lord is in your steps. Every step you take, the Lord said, I'm with thee. And I shall take that step with thee. Yea, I am with thee. I, my glory to shine around about thee. And I am in your walk life. You're being shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So fear not, my daughter, and fret not. Know that I shall lead thee, and I shall go before thee. And the barriers, the hindrances, and the strongholds shall fall, because I shall command them, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise you, Jesus. Come on, let's praise him. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, know, my son, I've put my word in your heart and in your mind for this hour. And know that there's coming a great change. And not only within, but even without. So seek the Lord. Cry out to the Lord. And he'll show you this change. And this change is of me. And you shall rejoice because God shall direct thee. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise him tonight. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. We love you, Lord, tonight. Praise you, God. Hallelujah, Brother Tommy. The Lord is with thee, my son. And the Lord shall help you. I see the finances coming in. And it's going to flow in, God says, because of your love and your obedience. Fear not, my son. I go before thee in this hour. And I shall give revelation and insight and perception to you, saith the Lord. For you've been obedient to the Lord thy God. And know that my angels shall go before thee. And know that uh, the Lord shall open up a, a, a strange door. It would seem in the natural. But God said, it's a door of the Holy Ghost. And, it, and as there'll be many adversaries, but know that I'm with thee. And I shall give you joy. I shall give re, you rejoicing. And thou shalt know that the Lord has sent thee hither and thither. For yea, the Lord God shall God, cause you to go and cause you to come. But I say the finances shall come in, my son. Fear thou not. Know that you'll see the mighty hand of God doing it. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. For surely the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou art truly a mother in Israel. Yea, thou art my servant that I've spoken to and shall speak again to, saith the Lord. So fear not and fret not. That which I've given thee, thou shalt shout it from the housetop. And that which a man would speak in the darkness, yea, thou shalt hear it, and thou shalt speak it in the light. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise him. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, praise Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. How many want to get sealed tonight? Raise your hands. Let's pray. Amen. Father God, Father God, seal us. Seal us, Father God. Let us be part of this great army. Let us be part of this white horse company that shall go forth in your name and in your power. Lord God, help us. Deliver, set us free, Lord. Lord God, seal us, we pray, with your word and with your spirit. We bless you, Father. We bless the meetings tomorrow night. Tomorrow and tomorrow night. We ask the Holy Spirit to move mightily in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.